The sudden downward spiral of China's second largest real estate mogul, Evergrande, which once held an unshakable position in the industry, stunned observers worldwide. People, especially those in mainland China, were deeply aware of the profound implications this crash would have. However, the era of this tumultuous collapse has now passed, and the current landscape of China's real estate market has shown signs of stability. Through an assortment of governmental interventions and other mechanisms, significant efforts have been made to contain and rectify the crisis. This brings us to the crux of the matter. What is the present state of China's real estate market? How was Evergrande navigated through these turbulent times? Is the company still burdened by debt and facing complex issues? Or has it managed to resolve its problems? To answer these questions, we need to embark on an exploration. But first, it is crucial to summarize the rise and fall of Evergrande to fully grasp the company's situation and its impact on the market. Founded in 1996 by Zhu Jiayin, a former technician on a construction site, China Evergrande Group started with the humble ambition of building homes for average Chinese citizens. Within just a decade, Evergrande's aggressive expansion strategy propelled it to the top echelons of China's booming real estate sector. Known for its affordable housing projects, the company's portfolio grew rapidly, sprawling across 280 cities in China. But Evergrande's ambitions weren't confined to real estate. Over the years, it diversified into a variety of sectors, including food and beverage, health, culture and tourism, and even football, buying the Ganzhou FC soccer team in 2010. By the late 2010s, Evergrande was a behemoth, boasting a workforce of over 130,000 employees and assets exceeding $355 billion. On the surface, Evergrande was a shining star, a symbol of China's meteoric economic rise. But beneath the glitz and glamour, trouble was brewing. Evergrande's breakneck growth was powered by an aggressive borrowing strategy. By 2020, the company had accumulated an astronomical debt load of around $300 billion, making it the world's most indebted property developer. It's important to note that borrowing in itself is not bad. Many companies use debt as a lever to accelerate growth. However, in Evergrande's case, the sheer magnitude of the debt and the company's inability to manage it effectively were the first warning signs of trouble ahead. A series of unfortunate events began to unfold. In 2020, Chinese authorities, wary of the mounting debt in the real estate sector, introduced a new policy known as the Three Red Lines. This policy placed stringent financial health criteria that property developers had to meet before they could borrow more funds. Evergrande due to its massive debt load, failed to meet any of the red lines. This was a substantial blow, as it meant the company could not borrow more money to finance its ongoing projects or repay its existing debt. Revenue started drying up as the company grappled with slowing property sales, heightened by an overall cooling down of the Chinese real estate market. In 2021, Evergrande sent shockwaves through global financial markets when it publicly announced its cash flow problems, warning that it might not be able to meet its financial obligations. This admission sent its stock price into a freefall, and the company's bonds were downgraded by international rating agencies. The rise and fall of China's Evergrande and the potential implications of its collapse have captured headlines globally. However, as we venture into 2023, there may be a glimmer of hope on the horizon for its beleaguered real estate giant. The journey ahead is fraught with challenges and uncertainties, but let's explore the recent developments suggesting a possible comeback for Evergrande. In 2023, Evergrande made a pledge that surprised many observers, a vow to repay its massive debt within the year. This audacious promise was more than just a bold statement. It represented a commitment to weather the storm and re-establish its position in China's real estate landscape. However, the pledge raised many eyebrows, considering the depth of the financial crisis Evergrande was in. Fast forward to March, and the company started to take concrete steps to make good on its promise. Evergrande announced a debt restructuring deal, a plan aimed at mitigating the company's financial woes. The proposed plan involved the restructuring of $19 billion worth of international debt, a move that offered some reprieve for the troubled conglomerate. 
Evergrande's restructuring plan, if successful, could mark a turning point in its tumultuous journey. However, the path to recovery is not without considerable risk. The plan requires the approval of its creditors, who have to grapple with the dilemma of whether to take a significant haircut on their investments or risk a complete write-off if the company goes under. By late March, there were signs that Evergrande's efforts were bearing fruit. According to reports, the company was on track with its restructuring plan, indicating that it was making progress in meeting its debt obligations. This development was met with cautious optimism, a sign that perhaps, just perhaps, Evergrande might pull through. By April, the company had put forth a detailed proposal for restructuring. However, the markets remained skeptical, especially considering the significant challenges the company was facing in terms of managing its liquidity crisis and navigating regulatory oversight. Yet, the company's determination to forge ahead with its plans signaled a possible new chapter in the Evergrande saga. In May, Evergrande delivered an unexpected and significant update. An agreement had been reached with a majority of its major creditors. This news was a critical milestone in the company's journey to restructuring its financial liabilities. The agreement reflected the creditors' willingness to support Evergrande's proposed plan, showcasing their belief that it was a better alternative than a complete liquidation of the company's assets. With the reached agreement, Evergrande was able to commence with its offshore debt restructuring proposal. This maneuver was not only crucial for Evergrande, but also significant for China's property market and the global financial markets. It demonstrated Evergrande's commitment to fulfilling its obligations, thus helping to alleviate fears of a contagion effect in the broader market. In addition to the debt restructuring proposal, Evergrande had been actively managing its pile of liabilities, which amounted to a staggering $127 billion. This included dealing with unpaid bills and multiple lawsuits lodged against the company. The handling of these issues was a clear sign of Evergrande's determination to stabilize its financial situation and restore its reputation. Evergrande's founder and billionaire Hui Ka Yin was also seen playing a crucial role during this turbulent period. His negotiation efforts and willingness to compromise with creditors became an important factor in reaching the restructuring deal, despite initial difficulties. These efforts, coupled with his pledge to repay the company's debts, suggested a renewed drive towards mitigating the financial crisis. By the end of May, the hard work was starting to pay off. Evergrande had shown signs of stabilizing, and despite many obstacles still in the way, the future began to look a bit more promising. With continued support from its creditors and a meticulously executed restructuring plan, Evergrande could yet chart a path towards recovery, making a potential comeback for one of China's biggest real estate players. The Evergrande crisis and its subsequent handling has undoubtedly provided crucial lessons for China's property market and international investors alike. Regardless of the final outcome, the journey so far has emphasized the importance of financial prudence, proactive crisis management, and effective corporate governance. Now looking ahead, let us dive deeper into these intricate plans that Evergrande has outlined for its potential comeback. Key to this plan is the restructuring of $19 billion in international debt. In essence, Evergrande is asking creditors to accept a significant loss on their initial investment, replacing their current holdings with new debt and equity interests in a restructured Evergrande. The haircut, as this is colloquially known in finance, is estimated to be about 75%, meaning creditors may recover only a quarter of their initial outlay. Yet amidst the dire numbers, there's a silver lining for creditors. While the proposed loss is substantial, it could be more favorable than the alternative, a complete write-off in the event of an uncontrollable default. It's a high-stakes gamble, and the world is watching to see how creditors will respond. The complexity of Evergrande's debt, scattered across numerous bondholders worldwide, adds another layer of difficulty. Evergrande needs the approval of the majority of these creditors to implement its restructuring plan. Achieving consensus among such a diverse group, all with varying risk appetites and financial objectives, is no easy task. 
On the other front, Evergrande has made headway by selling non-core assets to raise funds. The sale of its bottled water business, its stake in a regional bank, and other non-core assets are steps towards reducing its immediate debt obligations and, in the long term, refocusing on its core real estate business. Evergrande's saga illustrates the dangers of excessive debt and the potential for redemption. Despite a significant crisis, Evergrande has made strides in 2023 towards rectifying its past mistakes, including a pledge to repay its debt and proposing a debt restructuring plan. Major obstacles such as complex debt structures and regulatory scrutiny remain. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.